New York City? Well, maybe you can't, but I can. It took me five days of walking. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, and here's what happened. Last time I messed up, I had to stop walking because my legs were covered in ticks. But I learned my lesson, so this time I'll be stuffing my pants Big into my socks. Brain hands. I hope this works. I think I look very cool. Walking around in South Philadelphia is nice because the streets are lined with cool shops, nice His voice sounds familiar. and useful tools. A pizza cookie. <laughs> I've heard of pizzas and I've heard of cookies, but never have I ever heard of a pizza Gino's. Cookie. So yeah, South Philly, pretty cool. North Philly, I would stay, I'd stay away from North Philly. Philadelphia. You fucking one rich having piece of shit city that no one gives a fuck about. After that, I passed the river. Casino, Bill Burr. Which is a great place to lose <laughs> a lot of money. And then a few minutes later, I passed Penn Treaty Park, which is a great place to watch the sunrise. The other day, a friend of mine asked me, what are you going to do once you get to you know, New York? Beard I think insane. I was quiet for a second. How do you eat kind of food? Laughing. That's not really something I've given much thought All that hair. Because once I get to New York, I'm going to... feel like every time I eat anything, right it would just be... Much. It's not about what just make your whole get face York. disgusting. That's not the exciting part. It's about the walk. It's about the walking. This is it. This plant is trying to escape from the building. You just eat beard. Good for him. I don't know what the heck is going on here, but hey, <laughs> we must be getting close. And after nine miles of walking, a little food from my favorite gas station slash convenience store would uh, really wah, hit wah. the spot. Even when you're on the road in the middle of nowhere, you got to get your protein in somehow. Never had one of these before. Are just absurd. Kind of looks and like it'd be so gross. I don't know. So after I ate, I did some light stretching Those just to help things. out with my sore legs and back and shoulders. And it felt amazing. I know what this video is about. After that, I felt fully rejuvenated and it was time to keep walking. Let's see. So that brings us to about 2.07 p.m. And we've covered about 10 miles. It's just going only halfway just to walking. the new target. So it's going to be a long day. I suppose they're all going to be long days. I mean, Wawa can be good. It's a much nicer thing to find than like a 7-Eleven. It's still like a gas station convenience store. Some people do swear by them, but... Some guy saw me and went, You going hiking? Where I grew up, the best we had Cumberland Farms. Which... Honestly, kind of sucks compared to a Wawa. I kept seeing these backyard chickens at different people's homes, and to be honest, they were starting to make me hungry, so I had to stop. I came into this Wawa right behind me, and guess what? They were handing and out. Texas has Bucky's, which is pizza. pretty Today dope. Is my lucky day. I'm on my way to Bad looking pizza. I'll be there soon. You better be ready when I get there. You don't want to make me angry, do you, New York? You won't like me when I'm angry, New York. I'm not angry at you right now, New York. But you better be ready when I come to get ya. Oh, I'm gonna get ya. <laughs> yeah, Bucky's is huge right now. People like travel to that one in Texas. It's like the biggest gas station in the world. It's getting dark. I'm still on Bristol Pike. What the I'm fuck? headed towards the next Wawa where I'm going to grab some dinner and what the try fuck? and find a place to settle down for the night. After walking on a highway for hours on end, there's no better oh, sight man, you're in fucking for a man with tired legs and an empty stomach P. than the inviting red glow of a Wawa. Man, this is really bright. Hello, everybody. I found a little place by the Wawa, and I'm going to try my best get some sleep tonight, get some rest, so I can do it all over again tomorrow. I feel much better this time than I did the first time I tried this challenge back in May. I've never slept outside like this before. It's something I used to fantasize about as a kid, but never had the, the spirit to go through with it. So 
trying this out for the first time. Hopefully, you know, I don't get eaten by a bear. See you in the morning. Well, I thought I was going to get a full night's sleep, but about <laughs> two hours after laying down, it was just No, Dave drops cold. is from Connecticut. I'm not going to get any that. sleep. I might as well keep walking. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little skunk right there. That right there is a little skunk. I see the black and white. This is the exact motel I stayed at last time. You know, 80 bucks is kind of a lot for a crappy, dirty, stinky motel, but it's warm. I get to watch cartoons and I get to charge my phone an extra phone charger. I'm just gonna relax and watch my favorite cartoon. Good morning, baby cockroach. Yeah. It's about 7.30 a.m. The sun is shining. The garbage is garbaging. The fridge is fridging. And I am brushing my teeth. Peace. Got out of the house. It's about 8, 10 a.m. Got a I mean, long day ahead of us. Hopefully we get towards uh, Princeton, New Jersey. This guy's doing a lot of work. I'm pretty sure days. we're going to get to walk on a trail today instead of a busy highway. Depending on this video, that this might be his job, basically. So a lot of people have been asking me, how's your stomach like reacting to eating nothing but chicken tenders and milk, you know, for the duration of this trip? I've been handling it pretty well because, well, every day for the last two weeks, I mean, I've definitely watched trip, Damn Drops a lot. Well, not maybe a lot, but a decent and amount. Drinking a half gallon of milk you know, every CD day, there. you know, to prepare my stomach more for the stress that, that, that I'm putting it through. And yeah, so far so good. It's uh, midday stuff. Thursday now. And I'm almost at Trenton, New Jersey. And I've got to hurry up because I have a train leaving New York Sunday night. And I don't want to miss it. Another thing a lot of people have been asking me is, why are you walking to New York? And well, because I've got a train to catch. Just a couple miles away from crossing the state line into New Jersey. And you know what they say, if you can make it to New Jersey, you can make it anywhere. People start adventures and expeditions for all kinds of reasons. Let's it see, sucks. Captain Ahab went on his adventures to get revenge on that whale. Ernest Shackleton, he went on his adventure because he wanted to be the first explorer to cross Antarctica. And no, I'm not going to New York to exact any kind of revenge or, and I'm definitely not the first person to ever go to New York. Millions of people have gone I think he, to New York. Those are just his and comfort even foods. Me, I've been to New York. Just because someone has done something already doesn't mean that you shouldn't. Their experience There's is supposed theirs, to be like water in and this, this river. experience is mine. If you're watching this video and it inspires you, but maybe you're thinking to yourself, what's the point in doing that? This guy already went out and did it. I think that's the wrong way to look at this. This experience is my own. Honestly, sleeping outside under the, with the world. But if like, you in like the idea urban this, area with then I think like that you should go out without anything over your, your head experience. is It'll be it totally like unique would for mine. You. It might be Overnight. better, it might be worse, but it'll be all yours. Looks like this is the end of and the That's like what people do go and do that. They find people like sleeping and like just fucking this kill them. This is not okay. Damn, dude. Fortunately. Why couldn't you have been like the most vulnerable humans out there? Some swirling colors for a moment. So of it course. It's time to cross the bridge. New Jersey. Man, There's always I some fucked up person you. doing shit like that. I bet that. no one's ever said that before. I might be the happiest person ever to enter the state of New Jersey. Finally did it. I made it to New Jersey. It's not New York, but it's pretty close. Ass and Pink Drive? Who let them do that? Yo. <laughs> this dude, yo. In Jersey, there's a statue of kids eating dog shit and a monument to Bucky's. You motherfucker know what time it is? That's right. Beef jerky time. Look at this crazy house. It looks like Dude, I was gonna get some beef jerky the other day. Like I was looking at it on, on Target's website. I'm looking at beef jerky. I'm like, what's the most popular beef jerky? And I'm looking at all the different beef jerkies and uh mixed in with the beef jerky I'm looking at is just dog food. There's just beef jerky dog food bags. And there's it's indistinguishable from the other dog from the other beef jerky. It's just like I was like, uh, I don't know if I want beef jerky anymore. I don't know, it's just funny. 
because it is a, it is basically a dog food. Mansion out of eyes, and I love it. Or something. Better leave it alone. It's none of my business. I'm walking. Just made me completely not hungry for beef Me jerky too. anymore. Walking on the highway at night, still about two and a I mean, half yeah, it's miles good. from the nearest Wawa. Definitely not the best part of the walk so far. But hey, life can't. Yeah, it's like leftover candy and rainbows all the time. I'm never gonna take cars. I mean, you could buy really good again. jerky Thank that's you, made Thank you. I'll never take for you that for purpose. But... Ever again. I love you, cars. Thank you. I finally made it to the Princeton Wawa, the smartest Wawa in the universe. I got some food. I secured by Airbnb for the night, and they were even playing a free yeah, It just movie depends on how processed it is, I guess. Oh, it's a Kenny. He's the raid, man. Weird movie, but we had a good you know, stream. It was free, What's up, so everybody? We're just watching some and thus videos. Concludes day two. I'm going to go some enjoy viewer Wawa requested videos. Airbnb. Good morning. I just woke up and I'm headed to Wawa, of course. Rainy day today in Princeton, New Jersey. Hopefully, yeah, like local stuff is usually the way walking, to go. But if it doesn't, hey, I can't control that. I woke up this morning um, uh, just a little bit before seven, and it was pouring outside. You make your own Sometimes too. When it's pouring outside. It's a good opportunity to sleep in, and that's exactly what I did. It's around 9:30 a.m. now, and hopefully, even though I'm getting my day started a little later than usual, hopefully that doesn't screw me over. Yeah, I mean, social status and education and old-ass buildings are cool and all, but there's really only one thing Princeton has to offer that I'm interested in. Do I even need to say it? <laughs> so what should I do when I graduate? Like a nicer Wawa? I should probably go to college. Yeah, college. That's funny. Now a drizzly autumn day is the perfect it's a Princeton day Wawa. for a walk. Don't get off the trail today. Hey, thanks for Stay saying that, man. I'm glad you enjoy. It's the right thing to do. You thanks again for the raid. I've only been eating uh, the food from Wawa, but also the same food from Wawa. from Wawa. And um, I only packed one pair of clothes, so I've been wearing the same thing. Glad you day. enjoy. I'm kind of into it. Wearing the same thing every day. Okay, and just hanging out, everybody. Every I haven't had to spend any time or mental energy thinking about, hmm, what should I eat? Or, I was playing hmm, some what spooky games wear? earlier. Then. I kind of think of it like an idiot's version of Mark Zuckerberg wearing the same thing every day. It's nice not to have to think about Reach it. Reach clothes. Question. We're just watching so stuff that people have requested. Years ago, Discord, and it was so. if I had infinite money, what would I do with my time? And one of my answers was I'd go on a long ass walk. Go the drop some is, stuff off. The Jeff watch this channel. Very much money at all to go for a long Someday we'll get walk. to it. Pretty budget friendly Reach activity. Them. So even though Big I don't have infinite money, stuff. I like there was the nothing really stuff. stopping me from going yeah, on man. this walk. We actually just that were playing stuff. said, it did take me a number of years. To finally it's always like it. hit or miss, though. So. The first time, but not this time. Too crazy uh -uh. Tonight. I was walking. Appreciate those bits. When all of a sudden, this much. skunk popped out of nowhere, and he's been chasing me for like the last half mile. I think he has rabies or something. I'm not sure what to do. He just wants to be your so friend. I've just been, you know, going backwards on my path. You guys see him? Yeah, I've this seen some of the hobo up. life ones with the trains. Stop it now! Go back in the woods. Oh man, he's just he's just sprinting at me. This sucks. I was already running late today. And now I have to double back. Could be rabid. Is chasing me. Stop following me. Stop it. I'm trying to go up this way. Let me let me pass. Let me pass. Hey, turn around, buddy. Turn around right now. Get out of here. Let me through. <laughs> I can't reason with this thing. He's acting like a total animal. Yeah, I definitely cool. think this little dude's got rabies. I mean, he's missing so much hair. Get out! Go away! Go back to your family. Oh god, he's really he's really running at him. He's really running. Hey! You know, also you don't want to get sprayed. Well, I turned around because of the that would ruin skunk. the whole oh, fucking trip. Like Maybe like a mile, mile and a half. But the real bummer is now I have to go back on the highway. I really hate walking on the side of the highway. Plus, I'm running out of daylight. This skunk is messing everything up. So after the skunk debacle, <laughs> I'm uh, running low on daylight. And I'm afraid that I might not be able to finish the day out. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll finish the day, but I don't know if I'll be able to make it 
to where I wanted to make it. Maybe the skunk uh, was just like after those pup, those fucking, still got those dogs out, like you know? 14 miles away. Because I'm so tired, I'm probably barely walking over two miles per hour. I'm not sure what to do other than just keep walking. Every day so far, I, there's a moment when I think to myself, today is the hardest day or today is going to be the hardest day. And so far, every single day, I think they wobble because every day know. has been harder than the last. I haven't really seen so many. So I may not have made it to where I wanted to. Who's <laughs> back in the tenders? Great food. I guess it's like that's nice one thing Wawa is good for. It's got so if you anything you like there, Things you go back and get well. it. I really hope I don't get chased by any more rabbit animals on day four. Another rainy morning in New Jersey. Got a lot of walking ahead of me today. You know, I'm not looking forward to walking in the rain, but. I can't control that. I don't control the weather. Not yet. Not yet. Route one in the rain. Yep, that's what we got today. Route one in the rain, baby. Taking the highway. Yes, sir. You know what they say, right? On route one, no one can hear you scream. Ah! Ah! Oh my god! Ah! Wow! Ah! 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 So you going to New York, huh? How big guy? You think you're better than me, don't you? You think you're fucking better than me. Fuck you, buddy. You might be going to New York, but you're still an asshole. Fuck you. You must fucking think that you're fucking better than fucking me. Because you're going to New York like a big sack. Newsflash, buddy. You're not. You ain't sick. You ain't sick. Going to New York. Go to my ass, motherfucker. I wonder if you can get yeah, looks like a wood to walk chuck. along highways in the rain. Is anybody hiring for that kind of work? Let me know. Here are a few things I know about New York. Uh, number one, Statue of Liberty. Number two, the Big Apple. Number three, <laughs> the streets are paved with gold. Number four, a lot of Jewish people. And number five, 9-11. Time for breakfast. Listen, I am tired of people saying that New York is close to Philly. New York is far as far. I mean, I guess. If anybody knows this, it's me. New York is very, very far from Philadelphia. Around 12 p.m. Also, I think the I chicken tenders are and so he doesn't get hours later, food on his beard, this maybe? sign felt especially relevant. He's like Min Max is... Every step was painful and I was sore like never before. There's only He's one thing that can cheer me up in street this Street sign walking. So thing. I got a long day ahead of me tomorrow, 23 miles. If I don't make it tomorrow... But I don't really have an option. I have to make it tomorrow. I feel like I'm just watching That's a Daniel Larson leaves. video. I don't want to miss my train. Good morning, everybody. Today is the last day. I need to make it to New York today. Otherwise, I go back home to Philadelphia a failure. Not really. There's a lot of distance to cover today. It's not going to be easy. But come on, I've come this far. It's too late to give up now. It's in prison again? Good. Big Mac and Big Pharma. Working together. How the hell is this thing just floating here? More importantly, <laughs> why is it just floating there? <sighs> Sometimes in life, you have to wait for the things that are most important. I was getting pretty hungry, and I was starting to worry that I would never come across something good to eat. But then I saw this piece of garbage, and I knew I was close. I was still not sure that i was gonna make it it seemed like signs of death were all around me even the no, beautiful this is colors of fall somewhere. foliage are really just a signal of near death walking along the highway just a mere few feet away from the speeding cars was not exactly helping this train of thought but then i saw the cloud factory and that cheered me up Anyways, look at this crazy thing I found stuck in the bottom of my shoe. Some people like the golden arches. I prefer the crimson wings. Welcome to Elizabeth. And the fact that it's actually like edited shows some sort of sentence. is so relatable. I may be sore, but at least I finally found the ideal diner. Too bad it's closed. Newark, New Jersey. It sounds almost like New York, but it's not even close. Aw, he's so sad and tired. Look at him. That big stupid stick. Look at him go. He is so serious. Oh. But how could I give up now? New York is just on the horizon. I've had a pretty easy life for the most part. 
And this is by far the hardest thing I've ever done. I'm much He's weaker in the short the term, like limping and walking as fast as an old man. And I'm sure when I get home, I'm gonna be uh, stuck in bed for who knows how long, a day, two days, a few days. But in the long time, long term, I'll be stronger. I can do Stick does things. not seem like I'm it would be helping you, dude. You. I see you, New York. I'm coming for you. I'm gonna get you. It's the I'm worst walking sure. stick ever. I'm gonna get ya. There's no need to rush things as long as you consistently keep on chipping away at them. Okay. Okay. He's like in Staten Island or Jersey City or something right now. If you truly want to make it to New York City entirely on foot, one would Across need to go river. up and around the George Washington Bridge. Yeah, he was in but Jersey if I City. tried to do that, I was going to miss my train. And that was the whole point of making this journey was to catch my train. So I took the ferry across the Hudson River. I feel uh, personally attacked by this ferry ticket. Yeah, I had swim. a friendly stranger take a photo of me waiting for the ferry. He took a video. It's fine by me. Having to say it's for people makes me think it's not for people. What is this an advertisement for? Yeah, Bumblebee is just part of Times Square now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm up at Brooklyn. Now I'm down in Trump. Yeah. Right next to the narrow, but I'll be hood forever. New York City, baby. Trump, since I made it here, I can make it anywhere. Yeah, they love me everywhere. I used to cop in Harlem. All of my Dominican Connors right there up on Broadway. Go watch the Eminem challenge. <laughs> what? Made of. And ooh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No. Come on. So, yes. I do like that song, un unironically. That was a good video. Things are made up. I'm ran up. I mean, I I can think of one way to actually show it. What's the command for easy Someone, like, feet again? You just want to showcase how strong this is. Hey. Because <laughs> I posted that. Someone posted this because I posted that there's, clip of easy feet. There's a lot of peaks. <laughs> Volume warning. I think, I think we pushed. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take a while. It hasn't crashed. It instantly gave him that. Oh my god. Oh, that's so loud. What the f? What the f? That's so awesome. Holy shit! Hey, you're still alive! Whippersnapper? <laughs> oh my god. I don't I don't think they're gonna come back down. That was so loud. I'm so sorry for the volume on that. <laughs> Everyone died. Like Bo Bo Boone and Eddie are somewhere in here too. I was trying to show off the turbo and, and Eddie slow dead. mode, but that was no That was pretty awesome. My dreams are made of. New York. Oh, dude, Yucko the Clown. Doesn't he say like really fucked up shit? Hello, this is Yucko the Clown. Yeah, you out feeding the pigeons today? Yes, we are. Yeah? Is that how you met this bird-legged bitch right here? Yeah, he's just a bastard. 
kind of don't like him. It's fucking hot out here, huh? It's not you, yeah. it's us. Yeah. yeah, you're about as hot as a fucking Whirlpool freezer. Oh, really? Now? You're about the size of one, too. Oh, fuck you. I'm a lesbian. He's so really? fucking yeah. dirty. Yeah, you eat a lot of fish. Oh, yeah. You're like a fucking whale. Right. <laughs> Get it? it Who is he really, though? Right. Reminds me of, like, Dave Attell. Oh, really? Yeah. Getting married? He is. I'm not. Obviously, you ugly fuck. I'm gonna call you My name's Phil. Phil. My name's Phil. Okay. I forget how much of this is like is not safe for work. All we have can be lost. So this is his uh, stand-up special that just came out. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can change the world. Now, just remind me of like places Dave Attell would be. For the first time in human history, like we have limitless himself. intelligence potential at our fingertips. Technology can save us. And entertain us I saw this live last year it was so good well it shows like a 3d version of him naked he doesn't have any arts so it looks weird I don't know He's getting like yeah. fucked by an angel. <laughs> but neither of them have sex parts. Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god! I'm so excited! Yes. <laughs> wow! Thank you guys so much. <laughs> oh wow! Hi, I'm Richard Eagleton. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Stand Up Solutions. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. Wow, we have such a we have such an exit. We have so much to talk about. We got so much to get to. I can't wait for you guys to hear about all the wonderful AI products and technologies that we've been developing here at Stand Up Solutions. Um, I'm so for, well, first of all, I'm so excited to be in New York. <laughs> Is the beginning of I'm that? loving it. I'm loving. It. I'm having I'm having a great home. I just want to see the part with Kevin. And, um, or whatever his name is. The uh, TRL. Um, I think that happens so later on. I'm eating a lot of M&Ms. <laughs> uh, and, you know, having a great time. Uh, I go ground zero every day. Uh, we got so much to talk about. We got so much to get to tonight. I just, at the real quick at the top of the show, I want to give a big shout out to all the angel investors that I see out there tonight. Some of the angel, some of the angel wings I see out here in the audience tonight. Give a shout out to you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming out. You're really going to enjoy what you see here tonight. Stand Up Solutions is on the precipice of an incredible moment. This is a perfect time for a cash infusion, although we don't need it. <laughs> you know, we're we're fine. You know, but it would. You know, it's it's a, it's like uh, it's like having a, a nice. Uh, you know, it's like having a nice piece of candy after a good meal. That's what it would be like. I had the chicken, I had the uh, pasta, I, mm, you know, that was good. Okay, now I want a candy bite, you know? Uh, dessert. <laughs> so it's known as dessert. But we got so much, we got so much incredible stuff. The AI space is on fire. And it's, 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 it's you know, it's, it's a little scary, but it's also exciting. <laughs> and uh, by the time that you guys leave tonight, you're going to be certified AI experts. I can't wait for you guys to see some of the wonderful stuff that we have. I just have one question for you. Do you like to laugh? Yeah. I said Brooklyn! Do you like to laugh? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the world's first artificial intelligence stand-up comedian that is powered by 5G! Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> put your hands together for Ken! All right, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Ken, and I'm the world's first <laughs> AI-powered stand-up comedian. Now, I know what you're thinking. How could a computer do comedy? Well, don't worry, I have plenty to work with because my motherboard is Jewish. <laughs> so yeah, she screwed me up plenty. <laughs> Can I 
ask you guys a question? What the fuck is up with this chip in the credit card? Every goddamn time I go to checkout, it's like the fucking puzzle. Chip, swipe, tap, Apple Pay. Can I just give you some fucking money? I mean, come on. <laughs> like every cashier at Target is a fucking Yoda or some shit now. Card tap, you must. <laughs> Well, it's better than those uh, self-checkout machines. Those things are so confusing. Please scan your next item. Uh, when did I get a part-time job at the grocery store? <laughs> Nobody wants to work. We should have never paid people to stay home during COVID. Maybe that's why I got to pick up the slack at Target. But I'm thinking, what's next? I got to teach my fucking kid at home? Oh, wait, that's already happened. The fucking faces it makes. Uh, anyone here on the apps? The dating apps? apps? What a hell those things are. It's like the devil himself designed and programmed a new living hell for us. <laughs> He's supposed to be Bill I Maher. I a date with this person I matched with, and it was an awful experience. That's why he sucks. <laughs> oh, jeez. What else? I am a fucking garbage person, for real. I'm literally on goblin mode, like, 24-7. <laughs> I mean, my roommate goes out for a week, and I'm like, jerk off in the living room, I must. <laughs> for real. I'm, I'm literally on goblin mode, 24-7. Like <laughs> the whole time, my $4 million in student debt's looking at me like, seriously? And I'm jacking off in my grandmother's urine like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> I indulge in self-abuse to the point of it hurting my family. <laughs> oh my God, give it up for Karen, right? That was incredible, oh my God. Everyone was laughing, everyone was experiencing social cohesion, yes, yes. <laughs> there were no stabbings, there were no shootings, yes. No robbery, I saw you going, ha, 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 that's just like you to your buddy. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it felt like that set was popping off on all fours, right? <laughs> Hitting everybody in the funny bone at the exact same time, right? How the heck do we do that? Well, I'll tell you how we did it. Ken is the world's first AI stand-up comedian that is powered by 5G for 100% accurate comedy. Yes! <laughs> how the hell did we do that? How the hell do we read people's minds? You know what I mean? How the, what the heck does that? Well, we use the power of 5G, that's right! <laughs> This right here is called a QRJ. It's also known as a dirty box. And what it's doing <laughs> is it's pulling data directly from everybody's phone by using the power of 5G. All of your text messages, all of your banking information, all your photographs, all your, your uh, recent location history, and it's uploading it via the dirty box and uploaded it into an AI program that then runs it through da a data sets of comedy and ping-pongs it off of it, and it creates an AI stand-up set specifically for this audience in this place in time. <laughs> <laughs> for 100% accurate comedy, yes! <laughs> we got so much to talk about. We got so much to get to. You know, for me, I always say, let's let's take it back. Take it back to the origin, you know what I mean? Let's go all the way back to the beginning. How many people here like that show, uh, Shark Tank? Yeah? Man, I love it. I love it. It's one of my favorite. I love, I love, I love uh, uh, Mr. Wonderful. You guys know him? <laughs> Kevin O'Leary, you guys know, he's, he's a little bit of a, he's kind of a sexually active Dr. Evil. <laughs> he's, he's one of those guys. And Mark Cuban. Woo! Yeah. yeah. He's cool. <laughs> yeah. But uh, surprisingly enough, one of my favorite sharks is a female shark. Uh, and Lori, <laughs> I love her. She's great. I mean, she's beautiful. Not that that's important, uh, but gorgeous human being. Uh, nice head, proportioned correctly. Um, <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. And, and and she always says, you know, tell me about you. And, you know, she's like, I want to know about who you he are, where this, you're from. And then the basically you're exactly and, the same. And the person goes myself. off and says, oh, I started this company because my kid's dyslexic. Or what, they go off on something. And, uh, <laughs> and she, you know, because she wants to invest in the company, but she wants to invest in the person, right? Right? We, 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 want, we want to do that here tonight, okay? I want you guys to invest in stand-up solutions, of course, but I want you to invest in me. I want you to invest in my family, right? Right, right? I want us to become family, right? Right? I want to be family with you guys, right? 
I want to, I want to, I want to have Thanksgiving dinner with you, you know? <laughs> you know? I want to hold your hand as you pass away in a bed, you know? <laughs> I want to be close. I want to be close with you guys. I want to be close with you. So let's take it all the way back, all the way back to the beginning. And for me, the beginning starts in Des Plaines, Illinois. Yes! <laughs> Uh, beautiful, just downtown Des Plaines, Illinois. Uh, it's where I'm from, born and bred. I uh, love Des Plaines. Uh, it's in the Chicagoland area right here, Chicagoland area. That's right, yes. Where are you from in the Chicagoland area? Elgin. Elgin? <laughs> oh, get away from me. Uh, <laughs> Elgin and Des Plaines, uh, oil and, and, and bullets. Like his cell phone belt clip. There's Des Plaines up here, downtown the Des Plaines. That's downtown Chicago. It's roughly the border of Chicago. I think so. I think it's all New I York for this one. Downtown. It's exactly the same. Uh, you know. Actually, for the set Stevenson. in San Fran, he like there was like massive technical issues. Sunday, three a.m. No traffic. And the overhead wasn't working. This whole part, and they, so like the guys at the theater were like, "Yeah, I guess we're not gonna be able to do that." And he was like, "Um." Well, he's like laughing, like, it's kind of important, guys. It's like my entire show is kind of like, uh, I kind of need it. I kind of need it, guys. Like, I don't know. It's be funny. downtown 45 minutes. I finally got to work, but. <laughs> right downtown. Get downtown. Go down to that big silver bean that they got. Uh, slap on that thing, right? <laughs> hey, get that out of your mind. <laughs> They're basically like, yeah, we're not going to do that. He's like, well, I need that. It's uh, my entire yeah. show. <laughs> First fact about Des Plaines, Illinois, hometown of McDonald's, yes! <laughs> the wonderful hamburger sandwich restaurant that we all know and love started in Des Plaines, Illinois. Um, I don't know if you guys are required to take McDonald's history in order to graduate high school, <laughs> uh, but it's a requirement in Illinois. It's actually uh, quite an interesting corporate history, McDonald's uh, corporate history. Um, McDonald's was founded by the McDonald's brothers in California, and they had a franchisee, Ray Kroc, come in, and he did what was known as a hostile takeover of McDonald's. <laughs> he went ahead and uh, did a hostile takeover, and he completely took over McDonald's. And what he did is he pushed the McDonald's brothers out, and he lobbied at the time the Nixon administration to go ahead and have the McDonald's brothers completely unpersoned. <laughs> unpersoned. <laughs> and uh, their birth and death certificates were wiped from the record. <laughs> Uh, he had their bodies exhumed, and uh, he had them flown 90 miles out to sea, buried at sea like Osama bin Laden. Uh, and me and my family would always have tremendous smiles on our faces when we would drive past that original McDonald's location in Displays, Illinois. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Another fact about Des Plaines, Illinois, 10 minutes from O'Hare Airport, yes! <laughs> uh, I always tell my in-laws when they come into town, text me when you're a baggage claim. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and they always go, uh, yeah, sure. And then I show up and they go, how'd you get here so fast? <laughs> and I say, wait till you see how long it takes to get home. Eight minutes flat, I've timed it. You had I now love living by the Here's airport, you know, identifying the aircraft based on the engine sound in my living room. <laughs> and uh, the exhaust is totally fine to breathe. Um, but um, after high school, I went to University of Wisconsin. Yes! <laughs> Go bastards! Yes! Uh, this photograph was taken on alcohol day. Alcohol day? I had a great time at college, had a really, really wonderful college experience, uh, majored in uh, electrical engineering. Wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful major to major in. Uh, majored in that, and then I minored in Dr. Pepper Sciences. <laughs> <laughs> now, people always come up to me and they go, what the heck is Dr. Pepper Science? I don't know what that <laughs> There are 23 flavors that we know of. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> Let's just say in Avatar 3, you're going to be tasting a new flavor, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right? All right? The sub-explosion had something to do with it. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> if you walk away from here tonight and you only have one thing in your mind when you close your eyes and you think of Richard Eagleton, if when you think of me, only one word comes up, if only one concept, if the only thing that you take away from this evening tonight, it's when you close your eyes and you think of me and you think of one word and one word only, then that word is fatherhood. <laughs> 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 
I'm a father. I take fatherhood very seriously. I think God, I am not, I take fatherhood very, very seriously. I will never cry, but my voice will always quiver for my family. And I take it so seriously. Every day after I work out, I go down to the basement and I find the hardest chair that I can find. I put that down, I sit down, and I do a little bit of a guided meditation. A little bit of a scenario. I close my eyes and I imagine, you know, the most perfect, perfect Sunday spring morning, you know? One of those days where you look up to the sky and you go, thanks for this one, God, you know? <laughs> one, of those, one of those types of days, you know what I mean? And, and me and my wife say, let's go out, let's go have a picnic. Let's bring the boy out, let's have a picnic. You know, my wife Kathy, our son Jacob, and we say, let's go have a picnic. So we go, we get, we get a comforter and a box of fruit snacks and we go down to the park. <laughs> and we sit down and we're eating the fruit snacks. My son's running around, he's having a great time. There's a squirrel over there, that's great, son. Everything's nice. So, so nice, couldn't be better. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a bunch of fat Italian guys jump up out of the bushes. <laughs> no! Start shooting my wife and kid. No! I'm covered in wife and child blood. No! No! <laughs> Their bodies completely riddled with bullets. No way they're ever gonna live again. Ever gonna no! live again. All the fat Italian guys go, we killed your wife and kids. Huh? And there ain't nothing you can do about it, buddy, because we're the Italian mob. Huh? And I go, no! My wife and kids are murdered! Now I have to become the Punisher. <laughs> I have to become the Punisher. I have to move to Bensonhurst, Brooklyn into a studio apartment. I have to clean guns all day and research the mafia and develop pictures of fat old Italian guys and go, I'm going to kill you, buddy. I'm going to kill you. I have to do it. Oh, and I need justice. But if I get justice, will it even fix my broken soul? Ah! And yes, in this scenario, I'm single. <laughs> I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking about. Not only that. does he do, he does two shows at night. About. Sometimes I saw in some of his. Thinking about justice. <laughs> thinking about killing those guys that killed my family. Why? I'm not thinking about all the new apps that have been invented. <laughs> you know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about hunting these Italian guys in the street and killing them dead in the street. <laughs> I'm not thinking about all the new types of sex that was invented. New types of you sex. Know? Cause you gotta, I got married at, at my high school prom. We combined the ceremonies, you know, so. Oh, five. I missed out on a lot. You know, I'm not, I'm not thinking about, I'm thinking about justice. At the end it. of the day, I'm a father. <sighs> technically, I am a veteran. Uh, technically, I am a veteran of the Illinois State Naval Reserve. Uh, we are the world's only freshwater <laughs> Navy. We protect the 36 miles of freshwater coastline off of the coast of uh, Illinois, off of the coast of Lake Michigan. Uh, we protect it from different threats internationally, domestically, you know, submarine threats from uh, Afghanistan and Iran. Um, we're the only uh, branch of the United States military legally not allowed to use live ammunition. Uh, <laughs> we're allowed to use uh, airsoft guns and whistles. Uh, here's me and my Top Gun swag. <laughs> you see that Top Gun movie? Yeah? Did you see that Top Gun movie? Yeah? Yeah, did you? Did you? How'd they get them planes so fast, huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Man! Here's me with my commanding officer, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Donnie Shickey. He's a cool guy. Uh, but we, tech the, we protect the coast of Chicago. <laughs> that fucking threats. picture of him. Uh, He's taller than everyone. You know, very vulnerable via the Erie Canal. 
But I'm very proud of my veteranship and having the opportunity to serve Illinois. And um, just wanted to mention that real quick. And, you know, so we, so we can be on the same page, so we can be family. I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about me so you can invest in me, who I am. Richard Eagleton, know about my family, know about my technical veteranship, where I went to school, all that kind of stuff, displays. Uh, just get that out of the way so we can get to the business, to the nuts and bolts of stand-up solutions. Because we're at a precipice of a new industrial revolution, okay? The industrial revolution was kicked off by, you know, the birth of calculus and the ability to make these huge ships and use te math and technology. It's the exact same thing with AI. We're about to step into a new type of society, a new type of life, a new type of world that's unlike this one, and it's going to be so, so incredible, so much better than what we have now. But real quick, before we get into it, I just want to mention real quick that I am a proud RAV4 owner. Um, <laughs> I love it. There, we got to stop here. There's a few parts that get, like, spicy, but definitely check it out. Where he shows like people pissing and stuff. We'll watch other parts of it at some point. Joe, we've got an extra seat at the table if you want to join us. I'd love to. How's the new house? Good. We're nearly settled in. Great. I'm across the street if you need anything. God damn it. Mike, not in public. Sorry, broke the egg yolk. I almost had it. Had what? The perfect egg bite. Enough with the perfect egg bite. What's the perfect egg bite? It's everything on your breakfast plate in one perfect bite. That sounds great. How do you do that? Well, I could take you through it if you want to see it. All right, well, first you start with a piece of rye toast. It's got to be nice and dense so it can handle all the weight. So you take the toast and you put some butter on it. Now. You gotta make sure that you don't put too much butter on because it's gotta melt into the toast. Next thing after that is half a container of purple jelly. Okay, you mean grape? Yeah, I guess that's grape. Put that on there really nice. And then here's the Melsky secret, hash browns. It both keeps it separate yet somehow unifies it into one cohesive structure. After the hash browns, it's time for the ketchup. I put it on in a W for waza. That's right. And it's also the most efficient way to distribute the ketchup so each bite has a little bit of it in it. Now this is the perfect combination of flavors, but it's incomplete. It's time for the crown jewel. The over easy sunny side up egg. And you put the over easy egg on it so that the yolk is facing the corner. Now, the trick of getting the perfect it's egg. It's like actually egg. a good character All actor. The flavors and the unbroken yolk into your mouth. Because if it's broken, it's ruined. And if we've done our work properly, we're gonna have a pretty good egg bite. I love you, babe. Here we go. Calm down. <laughs> no, don't let this isn't funny, okay? It is serious to him. He is trying. I need a win. Things aren't going well for me. Don't do this. Don't do this. But this year is the year of zucchini for me. What are you doing? You're, I'm looking at the appliances. Don't they look really well maintained? Yeah. Thank you. I wipe them down every time I use them. Hey, how about we make some turkey? So you have heard the song before? Isn't he kind of a good, what? like... Of course I've heard the song. Blue collar dad song. character. It's everywhere, all the time. How have you not heard of it? What are you, an idiot? No. I don't know. Oh, hello, Sue. Hey, Joe. Mike, where are the kids? Lip number two. Hey, Mom. Hi. Joe, what are you doing? <laughs> Kelsey's fake asleep. Yeah, so is your neighbor. Oh, what do we have here? Text from Sarah, teacher. Oh, should we read it? Dear Joe, you make me so horny. Oh, I am I'm in awake. the woods. I'm awake. <laughs> I'm, awake. I'm, I'm rubbing. I'm, I'm okay. I'm awake. I'm awake. To you too, Joe. Snowmobile with me Saturday? Sorry, Joe. We've had a couple of glasses of Disaruni on the racks. Yeah, but then they ran out. Can you believe those jagoffs through your New Year's Eve party with just one bottle of Disaruni? Screw it. I'm in. 
Wait a minute. Did you just seriously send that? Yeah. Oh my god, what are you, a complete idiot? Don't you know how to be a player? You gotta say nasty, come on, you gotta take a picture of your pee-pee, send it to the girl over there. You know what, Mike? New Year, new rules. You bust my chops, I bust your lip. Sorry. I don't know where that came from. It was just a nice moment for me, and you kind of ruined it. AVGN and Joe Para should make a show together. Okay. So, these are going to grow up that side, and those are going to grow up that side? Hopefully. It's one of the uh, coolest uh, things I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) Just like that one where he's making the breakfast shit. Also, I like when people are taking the Connor O'Malley uh, AI robot thing. Like, wait, it's it's not real. Like, it was all made up. Supposed to be, he's supposed to be like, you know, like an NFT crypto bro kind of person. Like, that's who uh, Eagleton is supposed to be. Like, it's obviously not. I don't know. I just thought it was obvious. They took down, he took down the one video of him dancing where they used to dance on, uh... Here he is, Connor O'Malley. He used to do the Charlie Rose dance, like, in his garage. I, there's another version of it where he's in his garage and he's doing it, and I, I don't know what the fuck happened to it. I don't know if it's just gone. Uh, na, 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 na. I don't know. All right. Well, let's go through some more of these videos. This is a real serious pump bringing rain all the way into the eye heat region. And it's a beard. What is this? And it's unfair. All right. That's fine. Like- Thanks, John. <laughs> Fuck you, Dennis. Police in Dedham today announced the arrest what of the Dennis fuck is this from? they believe to be dead, which is definitely true. Yesterday, dead police in Dedham also discovered the dead body of Gerald Tracy, who was dead in her home. She was in horrendous condition, stabbed to death horrendously in her horrendous rented home. What's that? You found what? The body of Gerald Tracy. Where? In her rented home. How do you know? Police in Dedham discovered the body. Of- oh, I see. Yes. Well, you shouldn't be telling me this. All right. I'm sorry. Don't talk, please. What? She was killed? Oh. Yay. Nice. What happened that day? <laughs> day she was killed? Oh. Nothing. But Tracy did die that night. Oh, that's what the police say. I'm sure she wasn't dead. <laughs> what do you mean? Looks good. Nothing. We followed up the suggestion Nothing. of Gladish that perhaps Gerald Tracy wasn't killed after all. I was her best friend. No. If she was married, Any don't you think apartment? I would have been invited to the wedding? No. To put it in a word. No. <laughs> I'm not at all upset that Gerald Tracy is dead. <sighs> I must be a person. No, 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 no. Ugh. Hi. How about dinner? Sorry, Dennis, I can't. Okay. (laughs) What the fuck? Behind you! Good. That's your first clue. Don't forget to mark (laughs) down the the notepad for blue evidence. We should find two more clues. All right, Josh. What do you think? I can't believe you found the murder weapon. Oh, Redmond, listen to this. Josh says he's found the murder weapon. Great. I can't believe Josh found the murder weapon. Great. And because of the weapon, Josh says he's found. I can't believe this. Great. <laughs> Josh says he's found the weapon used to murder. Okay. Fine. All right. <laughs> Don't forget to mark down the notepad whether you saw the evidence or the evidence. We should get a camera or a reporter down there because about a half an hour ago, a half a man was found stabbed to death. 
in a half a phone booth. Tonight's top story, <laughs> Junk, was found just a few minutes ago, killed. Is that the Blues Clue guy? Yeah. phone booth at South Station. Earlier today, he had discovered the weapon used in the murder. The murderer apparently dropped it in his body. Police have advised him not to murder. It's possible he was murdered by the murderer and killed, no, I've never too. Seen this. So there you have it. Two murders. Don't look at both. I'm not at all upset that Josh from Blue's Clues is dead. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's Blue's Clues and you. <laughs> I'm calling the police. Mr. Fisher, it's extremely fishy that the person who killed Mrs. Tracy is the same fish person who bought a purse. Can you describe the person who bought the purse? The women. Oh, God. Can you describe a fish person? Yes, my friend. Fish. Fisher. A long fish. Such a fish would be quite distinct. I remember it quite distinct. RB. Can you substantiate this story? <laughs> Perhaps. Is it? Yes, my friend. The river. I can give you a burger. Two, as a rule. <laughs> 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 Does your wife know your mind works like that? All it means is that Fisher bought the fish. Hey, don't forget, I used to be a Fisher, too. Does your wife know your mind works? <laughs> Look, I am, too, and I've met fish. You know, I've got a nose. <laughs> oh, I think you might. She tells Fisher she'll dump fish in the sea. She doesn't. They fish. Tracy gets angry and picks up the fishy fish and kills her <laughs> out of love. Does your wife know your mom? <laughs> You're really fishing with that one. Oh, nah, I agree with your theory. Let's concentrate on fishes. Does your quote wife unquote know your girlfriend? That mate, Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> nah. oh. Come on. Police are also looking into the activities that night of her maid, Gladys, Sh who was arrested last week on drug smuggling and drugling charges. I smugly <laughs> talked with Gladys shortly after the murder. I don't like talking. Mrs. Tracy's maid, Gladys, <laughs> agreed today to be interviewed again. Fisher said that he was working Rugby. late the night Jim Henson was killed. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Husband? Huh? Yeah. Jensen was killed. Well, if you say so. Yeah. <laughs> Gladys agreed to be interviewed again by the woman, Beryl Blackwood. What was your involvement with Fisher Fisher? I love that man. He was a one. Anything more? <laughs> Police have also been questioning Jail Dean Potts' sister, Angela, who is currently in jail pending bail. Angela Potts is being held in Suffolk Maximum Security Jail. That's only one thing. I also talked to cats. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, that's pretty shocking news to those of us at the news. But there's one type of evidence you can believe. Here it is. Let's see what's on it. Doom. What genre is Doom? <laughs> what the fuck? You know, the original Doom. You know, Doom one from 1992. I know what genre Doom is. You know, Doom three. I know what you're thinking. It's a stupid genre. P.S. It's an FPS. But the FPS genre didn't exist. Huh? So, what genre is Jean Valjean? You know, the original one. A stupid question. A pathetic question. Wow. He's a bona fide, spectacularly poor, lightning fast, virtual reality, primitive, grid based, top down, polygonal texture mapped, orthogonal, pseudo 3D graphics, environment, first person perspective, fantasy themed, roguelike, ultimate underworld, the Stygian Abyss, Sloan, Wayne Gretzky, Hockey Killer, arcade action adventure, blaster, shoot em up dungeon crawler, RPG, <laughs> through the lens of doom. I will be taking no questions, dude.
do. Who brought in that tape? Who brought in that tape? Stop that tape! <laughs> I make it a custom never to keep them in. Anyway, stupid videotape. Good evening, this is Beryl Blackwood. I'm Dennis Oliver. And I'm Beryl Blackwood. Now, take out your coin and flip it. If the coin comes up heads, police in Dedham today announced the murder of WDOA station manager William Hemingway. So it's like shop a on Bond Street. VHS. Tales, we enjoy the annual United Charity Catch a Killer Saturday game. Saturday night. Stand for a good cause. And a good time, too. So that's all for this news. News for Beryl Blackwood. I'm Dennis Oliver. And I'm Beryl Blackwood. I'm Dennis Oliver. And I'm Dennis Oliver. And I'm Beryl Blackwood. And I'm Beryl Blackwood. Hello, Beryl Blackwood. This is Beryl Blackwood. And I'm Dennis Oliver. And I'm the weatherman. You figured it out. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It sure is. Isn't it? Here's a link to it. She's a maniac, man. All the sources. It was way less than I thought it was. This came out eight days ago. Although that there's like kind of a resurgence of YouTube poop stuff. That was like actually way, way better than most of them. My God. <laughs> you should just turn into a skeleton. Uh, I've got a good one for you. Is a maniac. Now we did that one. Everyone's seen that one now. It's ruined. What the fuck? Hi. This video is great. Uh, could I get a chicken burrito, please? Okay. And white rice or brown rice? Uh, white rice. White rice, okay. If you want black beans, pinto beans? I'm sorry, man. Is there any chance I could get maybe like a little more rice? Oh, sure. Why not? Okay, cool. And that's going to be $2 extra. $2 for more rice? That's just our policy, sir. I'm just thinking you might need a little more rice just to like maybe hold the integrity of the burrito together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could wrap anything up. Who's making these policies, you know? Like me. You are. Yeah. Sir, I'm the field leader of this Chipotle and several others in the area. You're responsible for this. I just came in the store today to check on things. Two dollars. That's your stop. The field leader. Black means I'm pretty sure I can wrap them. Be happy to just serve you just, just for this one. Oh, joyous day. Meal. You know what? It's okay. No rice. Okay. No rice. Black beans. Black beans. But just the bean water. What's up? Just the bean water. Okay. Bean water it is. You said chicken, right? You know what? Nah. I got a hankering for carnitas. But just the liquid. Is that cool? Oh yeah, I can wrap up anything. You got this. Carnitas liquid coming up. Double liquid, actually. That's extra. Corn, peppers, guac. Cheese, lettuce. Salsa. Yeah, mild pico de gallo. Sure, why not? Thank fucking God. But just the watery bits. Listen, I get you're frustrated about the portions and everything, Sour but cream, please. Why are you making the goddamn wettest burrito in the fucking world, sir? Sour cream. <laughs> Man, Sour inflation cream. and shit like Give the cream liquid off the top of the surface, field leader. You know what? Fine. Yes. Sour cream liquid. No, salad dressing. Great idea. Yes. Salad dressing. Good. There you go. 
Oh, yeah. Golly, fuck. Now wrap it up. Golly, I'll just fuck. Wrap it. I'm trying to watch my carbs. I'm on an all-liquid diet. Fine, I got this. No problem. Here we go. Come on. No problem, because he said you could wrap up anything. I got this. Because this is all you. No center mass. All this shit. Hey, team, I need help in there, team. This is all team. you. Help, hey. help me. Uh, it's Andrew Rousseau. I don't have a link to it. But that's his TikTok, and that's the end of the video that I've seen. It's just like how fucking dumb it gets. Golly, fuck. Yeah, that it's a it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, that reminds me, I got another one. It's one that I I showed to people. I feel like no one really watched it because it's too long. But I swear this is it's funny. It subverts your expectations. I swear. Where did I put it? Yeah, that was a really good, really good idea, I thought. If you can only sit through like two minutes of it, it doesn't, it seems like, uh, what the fuck? This is like a daily show bit or whatever. Yeah, it has like a few different twists. Very clever. That's what I mean lately. Like some stuff we watch and people that was on Twitter. Hold on. I'll link you it. That's where I saw it at least. Like people are impatient enough to like watch a thing before they start like being like, this is stupid. What am I looking at? Like, I don't know. I think it pays off, but I mean, obviously it's not for everybody. Not everybody has to think something like that is funny or clever, but. I just like the subversion of expectations and like you think it's going to be same old harping on about something and it's like completely different. I don't know. Like it's refreshing, I guess. All right. What's next? Can anyone see this? The other day, this is pretty short. This is funny. Sounds like Vinny, like losing his shit somehow. All right. Uh, Max linked this. This is from a longer video you guys may have seen recently. It's pretty good. Actually, kind of slaps. Hey, 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 hey,
I've seen this part. Is it Kingdom Hearts or is it Weather Channel? Weather Channel. This is Weather Channel for sure. I think it's Kingdom Hearts. Ah, two for zero. Gotta be Kingdom Hearts. I've never played Kingdom Hearts, by the way. Ooh, it's a tough one. Weather Channel? Hundred percent Kingdom Hearts. Too crazy for weather. Weather channel. Like how they have names for their songs. Sounds it's a good hard one. I'm saying that's Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. This would be too chaotic for it to be weather. We like we this weather for the end of the world. Darkness of the unknown. Okay, this sounds like like the last song. It literally sounds like the last song. Kingdom Hearts. What? Wow! Did they rip off Weather Channel? That's the only one I've gotten wrong so far. That 
Hearts, Kingdom Hearts. This is the one that started the meme. Okay, that makes sense. It's definitely Kingdom Hearts. Oh my god. That was the same song. This is Weather Channel. Yeah, the audio quality is like different. This has to be Kingdom Hearts. Holy shit. Also, some of them just sound like Final Fantasy, like so much. Dream Drop Distance. Oh my, what is with these names? This is Weather Channel. Sounds like Tarkov music. It's the same one, oh yeah. Kingdom Hearts. It's too cinematic. I do like some of the music from Kingdom Hearts that we're gonna add. <laughs> this has gotta be fucking Kingdom Hearts. Jesus Christ. There's like double bass in that. Ooh. That's a tough one. I feel like this is Kingdom Hearts, though. Yeah. Weather Channel. Weather Channel. Yeah. It's the same fucking song. Holy shit. The song must have like a 12 minute movement to it. Kingdom Hearts for sure. Sounds like some Kingdom Hearts boss music. Oh no! Wow, they got me too. Yo, what's up? It's Sphinx. What's going on, all you guys? We're what? We're doing a Weather Channel or Kingdom Hearts quiz right now. You guys had a good stream. Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Absolutely Kingdom Hearts. I can't imagine the weather being like what the apocalypse is happening. What else would that would that signify? Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same goddamn song. Insane. Insane. You guys are doing well. Thanks again for the raid, Sphinx. We're just watching um, videos from Discord that people have linked in our Jeff Watch This channel. All right, Hot Dog Radio. Of course, there was a fucking ad going on. Sorry if you guys got stuck in that. Okay. All right. So, you know, ground. Uh, All right. Do you want to say anything? Well, never done anything like this before, but I'm going to try to draw energy through this hot dog to appease our curiosity. Uh, try to draw energy through the hot dog to the ground wire <clears throat> that my jumper cables are actually grounded. Imagine dying to this. Sort of safe enough away. Man died electrocuting a hot dog today. 
the fuck? Good for the paint, but we can hear it. That's why you don't touch a tower. Look at that juicy stuff there. Talking hot dog? That would just happen if you touched that. The hot dog is smaller than it was. Show me the... Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's... Uh, the hot dog has disappeared. Part of it. Okay. Alright. Here's another hot dog. Don't stab your fingers. It appears to be a uh, standard hot dog. Nothing special. Don't stab your fingers. All right. Ready? Now we're going to try to see if we can... It appears to be a hot dog. Disintegrated. Correct? The fuck was that, car? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yep. I'm going to go parallel to this right here. I'm like a half an inch away. Make sure it's hot. It's hot. It reminds me of uh, episode seven of Twin Peaks: The Return. Don't touch too close. Okay, we see David Lynch's oh, electricity. Yeah. Bring it back. Okay. Obsession. It's not even hot. At the end of every surgical year, I'll write a piece Whoa. for. for, for... <laughs> This is why you don't want to touch an AM tower. If you eat it. Because that's what the end of your finger will look like. As it plays whatever sound is coming out of the tower. All right, so this is without the ground wire attached. Although, don't let the ground wire that's flapping around there, don't let it flap around and hit you. So no grounding. I hear it. There's I don't understand. There's a little bit. I'd, I still Honestly. wouldn't go on that tower. I wouldn't even hold a stick. That's stuck to a hot dog. <laughs> Any last words on that? Uh, just I would like to think this was like a safety PSA type announcement to all you guys <laughs> that might goof around thinking about it. Just don't mess with towers, period. No, I don't think I will. Nature. Nature. It's pretty sick. Interesting. This is the camera. Do they just engineer things? explode stuff i mean it's really what youtube should be used for we need more good old uh some education getting educated on the tubes maybe not too much though maybe just a little bit okay we're making our way through here um a theatrical trailer for the spirits within is this like a shit post Is it just literally the trailer? The same. I guess it is a shit post, kinda. You okay? We found it. We're closing in on the life form. Let's move out, people. And when this comes out, it's going to make Square Enix so much money. They came to uncover an ancient truth. This is it. Dr. Ross has opened the door for us. I say we go in. What they did. What the hell is that? Was unleash a force. Yeah, I remember seeing this in the theaters when I was... Ever known. When I was a youngin'. More so when I was younger, I was disappointed that it had nothing to do with any Final Fantasy I had seen. Like, I was like, this is just like kind of boring. It's not the worst movie in the world. It's actually pretty interesting on its own. Let's get the hell out of here. But the expectations were like completely different for, than what it was. Prepare you Look out! For where the next evolution in reality will take you. Everybody, here they come. Fire in a hole. It wasn't even the like the setting is fine. It was just like 
So anticlimactic. And like bizarre. It is not a fairy tale. It is true. I guess that wasn't a ship post. Love seeing America online key uh keyword directions on old advertisements. You guys ever use America Online keywords? I never had like real America Online. I always had like the fake one. Let me watch that. It's definitely a neat movie, but as a kid, it was just disappointing a little bit because I was like expecting there to be something more Final Fantasy to it. But also, the concept, like trying to make a movie from a Final Fantasy game, when you're a kid, it, it makes sense. But like as an adult, you're, after seeing all these video game movies, is like, yeah, actually, Final Fantasy wouldn't work as a movie. You know what I mean? You, it really would work, if anything, as like a show or like a multi-movie series or whatever. But yeah, you can't really just make a movie of that. You liked Advent Children? Even when I was like 15, I knew Advent Children was like, I, was like, I don't know about all this. I think we've made our way through the uh, backlog of people's recommendations here. The point that Advent Children really lost me was when they were being thrown in the air. They were each like doing a or jumping off each other to like get higher up to like I was like, what the fuck is that? What is that? Right, there's one more video here that Simon Beard linked of Julian Anderson. It ain't full house. Please welcome Jillian Anderson. The fuck did John Stewart have his own show that wasn't So the music. Very nice. Ah. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. That's spooky. Why'd you show that clip? It's just from your It's show. also like, oh. you know. <laughs> You could have like showed apart when we were kissing. Or Video something. games you just and, aren't uh, David, good movies yeah. and stuff. No, sometimes they're good games. Oh, I'm sorry, Scully Mulder. That's what I meant. Not David. A dialogue Mulder. would not have made uh, the uh, great movie. So are you guys gonna, you know, because there's a lot of questions on the internet about that. If you guys are gonna get together. Yeah, I know. I've, you know. I've had to answer that question a lot. Well, I, it, it seems like they've taken care of it for us. I think this was recommended because we were playing the X Files game the other day. Porno films, right? <laughs> Looks like somebody's been reading my diary. All right. Uh, I've, I've seen a couple, and I've also rented some musicals as well. I enjoy those. So. Uh, yeah, do you have your own? Uh... I don't have my own, but apparently there's a... Amy looks a, like uh, so different. Sex files. It's called The Sex yes, Files. Yes, yes, yes. The yeah. Sex I, Files. I don't copy. Apparently, Mr. Duchovny does, but... Uh, yeah, it's good. The plot's it okay. It's a guy, pizza delivery guy, alien, and uh, you guys end up doing... I hard to believe she was like uh, 22, wow. 23 at this <laughs> point. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> yeah, they enjoy it. Wow, that is the true measure of success, isn't it? It is. To get your own point. But you guys have everything. Magazine cover. She was only 21 yeah, in season a, one. The huge monster that I still don't know. You know, it's just kind of a... She lied about her age to I get the role, actually, I think. I'm doing it, and I don't know. Well, your enthusiasm is contagious. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm excited about it, but I'm in it. You know, when you're in it, you don't know. I mean, you know, what about you? Are you excited that your show's doing so no, well? No, but we're bombing. Like, no, it's not a problem. I'm just kidding. Um, we don't have a comic book cover. Imagine but, having the charisma of John yeah, Stewart. Look, look at that. The comic book. The I feel like you book. probably do anything. Wow. That was an odd artist uh, interpretation of you. It certainly was. Because you're quite lovely, and then you look at the cover, and perhaps they didn't capture your loveliness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, that doesn't that doesn't look like you at all, for God's sakes. Do people send you stuff in the mail, like illustrations of you? and, and They that do, are... they do. They, they send me um, pictures that they've drawn of me and ask me to sign them and send them back. Some guy actually sent me a, um, a, a piece of china that had my, um, 
likeness on it, but oh. he, he, he neglected to put clothes on me, so I'm like naked from here <laughs> up. Yep, I got that one too. You got, yep, got the porno plate too. I thought they were going to show it. No, no. It's like, I know. No, it's in my whole commemorative porno set that I have the plate. <laughs> I thought he was literally about to show it, like pull it out. Now, yes, you are. But you're a married woman, obviously. We're just kidding around. You're, right? <laughs> Aren't you? I am married. Yes, What's your I husband's am. name? My husband's name it's crazy is crazy that Jillian Anderson. Clyde Anderson? No. Nope. Do you want Looks me to guess? It's different now? <laughs> Clyde Johnson. No. Clyde Ferguson. <laughs> But no. like also younger Clyde somehow? Stewart. I don't know no. it's possible. <laughs> this is Clyde the Wonder Dog. I don't know. Bingo. What is you it? got it. It was Clyde the Wonder Dog. No, it's not. Yes, it is. What is it? Why aren't you asking me about my dog? What's your dog like? He pulls out of his waistband like a gun. No. Why don't you just punch me now and get it over with? How about that? This is a bizarre conversation. Um, uh, but you're, you're taping. Why is it that aliens always land in crappy places? You guys are always in like rain swept, cloudy, nasty. Why don't they ever land in Hawaii or something? I don't know. Always... I've, I've been asking that question myself. It, it looks good, though. You know, it looks good on the show. There's Moody, and, you know, we, our hair is wet, and it, it looks good. Yeah. I think this was all in nice mood, the so. Northwest and like actually, you know what, since the internet is outside so Vancouver, right? From the internet. Do you, do you mind answering a couple no. of these? Okay. They're, uh, they're from the internet. We picked them up today. Here's Skelly and Mulder, Romantically Involved. We already did that. Have you ever seen a real live alien? No. Okay. <laughs> no need to embellish. Uh, ever feel bad when you kill a monster? No. All right. <laughs> no. No, I don't feel bad when I kill a monster. <laughs> you, you, you learn that in high school, don't you? You have to like start and then you have to finish the sentence. And then you repeat the question. And then you All right. Repeat the question. All right. You're getting an A. Uh, here's one that I thought was very funny. It's Would You Be My Girlfriend? And it's from CyberMike at stillavirgin.com, which I thought was pretty cool. Wow. Is he human? Yes, he's human. He can type. The man's got fingers and, and, and all kinds of things. But you're very oh, much gosh. enjoying yourself on the show and it's, it's going to be am. kicking for a long period it's of time. It's going to be kicking past the time that I'm dead. It's going to be going on and on and you're I'm just going to... I'm sorry. It's funny because... Really no, yeah, well, no, I mean, I, what I meant to say is it's going to go on for a long time. And you'll be dead. Are they like talking about rebooting it again now? She says with a smile. Oh my goodness. We're going to take a commercial break and drink some happy juice. And we'll be right back after this with Jillian Anderson and, uh, and the X-Fox. Friday night. We'll be right back with Montel Jordan. Yeah, I didn't even know that this was a show that existed. That John Sear did that. All right. It was very good. I say, I say you're pissing too darn loud, boy. It's late at night and you're pissing right in the center of the bowl like you're frying chicken in there. You got to piss on the side, boy. Make it a stealth mission. You're causing a whole ruckus pissing like that, boy. All right. Well, that was pretty much the extent of it. Got a couple other random things we could watch, though. I think we'll save the TikTok stuff for another night, too. Another night coming up. Jillian Anderson on the Rosie O'Donnell show just came up. All right, I gotta watch this one. The Rosie O'Donnell show was so fucking awful. You scared me. Is that a jazz well, version of? I, I have something to go with your ice cream. You got a cheesecake theme song. No, this is oh. this is tofu pie. Oh, I thought she was going to hit her in the face with a pie. <laughs> Seriously? Is that what Seriously, it is? Seriously, it's tofu pie. Do you actually consume this, Julia? I used to, and I've been looking for it in New York. Now, I don't know how good this stuff is, because usually you can get, like, pumpkin right. flavor and blueberry. Definitely and peak really Julian good. Anderson. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it's wheat-free. Yeah. And it's dairy-free. Oh, yeah. And it's sugar-free. Great. And I want to see you take a bite. <laughs> it sounds delicious. I want to see you. Well, did you bring I me a fork? Well, no. You didn't even bring me.
carbohydrates in your. I don't know if I can listen to Rosie O'Donnell for you know, like protein and vegetables nine minutes. Yeah. And, and and there's some good Ofu stuff. pie, like, man. Like, oh like, God. Free, we free desserts. Uh -huh. Sounds yeah. cruel and unusual yeah. to me. Yeah, I promise. I'm glad right, you would well, like listen, it. You know what? He's enjoying it. What he's uh, liking it here. Maybe Cruella DeVille would like some. We'll give Ernie some. Look, you know who this is? The skipper from Jimmy like, What the fuck? Give him a little. He'll like it. All right, maybe she brought her a pie to eat and she just puts toys in it? What the fuck? It's my heart race. It, it, it makes my mood swing up and down and... I don't like myself on sugar. I like being kind of even. So I, I cook coffee this year too. I and did. coffee? Yeah, and coffee. What I know, do you have? I a know. soybean burger? What do you do? No, I just you know like protein and vegetables. Yeah. And and, and there's some good stuff. There's there's some great like sugar-free, wheat-free desserts. Uh -huh, that, yeah. Uh -huh, there. Mm -hmm. You can get. I promise. All right. Well, listen. You well, know what? Woody's enjoying it. Woody's liking it here. Maybe Cruella Deville would like some. We'll give Ernie <laughs> some. Look, you know who this is the skipper from Gilligan's Island. Let's give him a little. What little are you like doing? It. All right. Maybe Dorothy Gale and Toto. Look, Toto I think too. Toto would Woo! like it. There you go. Okay. Now, first of all, I am so excited about this movie. Look at you on details. Hello, scary I like alien the looking yet gorgeous. You're so morning, that? Sam. Who took that? You remember? I can't remember. You don't remember, I can't remember no. That. He's, uh, remember a while ago on, on, on the cover? Yeah, Rosie O'Donnell always has these, like, koosh balls. She was, like, shooting around. Yes. They're on the table right now. Now, do you, oh, they always make you sort of... She would shoot people in the audience, these, like, the koosh balls. You know, like, weird because of the character and the subject matter? Well, no, I mean, no. I've, I've, I've had some fun with some photographers and stuff, but it's, it's, it's not always alien-oriented. Yeah. Sometimes there's other things. Right. I remember okay. this. So great. Oh in um, Us Magazine, look at you, as Morticia Adams... And look at this guy. It's, it's, the thing is cousin it. That's cousin it. Cousin it. Oh, cousin who's it? the thing? What am I talking? Thing about? is the hand. Oh right, right, right. And then Lurch. You right. I've never seen Remember this Lurch? Show. You never saw this? I never saw it. Oh wait, you, you never saw Lucy either. Hold it. I'm sorry. Hold it. <laughs> you never saw Lucy. No, I love Lucy. I know. I, you know what? I grew up in London. I grew up in London, and I didn't have those shows. Over you there grew up in was... London? Yeah, That's I did. wrong, Julian. <laughs> Why did you grow up in London? Well, cause we. Moved Why did you grow up there? Film school, and then they fell in love with London, and and so. And how old were you when you lived in London? Why are well, you I from was London? Chicago, and then when I was six months old, we lived in Puerto Rico for about fifteen months, and then we moved to London. Until you were. Eleven. And then you don't have a trace of a British accent. No, I did. I kept it for a long time, kind of as a crush. <laughs> kind of like, you know. Really? Yeah. And then when you have a few beers, you're like, all right, lovey, let's get over there. You know? <laughs> Never comes out. No. Because people right. tell me that when I get excited or inebriated, I get much more. Uh, look at this. Look at you as the flying nun. How cute is that, sister? But you never saw that show either, did I you? I don't know why they allowed you to pose as these people it's when sacrilege. you don't even know them. I know. Jeez. Sorry. Do you watch your own show? I do. You do? I do. I watch it every single week. I've been confused lately about a lot of things that happen. Me too. Okay, the whole thing when they were spraying the money. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Then the guy was a good guy, saved him, and is this all going to be in the movie? Is this all revealed in the movie? Or is that part over no. and I just missed it? I think it was. I, I think you just missed it. You, ah, did, you just didn't get that little. I part. didn't get that part. No, and I, 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 I couldn't explain it to you on my life right now. People but. like me who are addicted to it, they're like scary fanatics, aren't? I missed the expo. You did? I was in Miami. It was fun. It was, it was really a big X Files expo. Was there? It was fun. It was did a you lot go of people. Yourself? I did. Yeah, I, I, I yeah that would have been well, fucking I sick, probably. Went to the New York here, and um, and they were a lot of fun. You know, it's just people that love the show. Right. And um, they were really sweet and. You know, they just love the show. Do you have a favorite episode? I bought you a gift. What'd you get me? Please don't make it be health food related. Oh, no, no, no. In fact, you can, you could stuff his face in the pie, too, if Who's? it wasn't crowded. What? Oh, what the disgusting. Fuck? The guy from the bridge is that the, or the guy in Russia? I don't know who this is. Apparently, this is the guy from, oh, you can see, yeah. Remember when you were on the bridge and we thought you were dead, I like but this. you weren't? This is pretty good. Yeah, let me see that. Give me that scary, disgusting. That's just like a prop from the show. She just like took. Do you want some tofu? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Before I used to eat normal food, then I had tofu. Now look at me. <laughs> hey, Rosie. <laughs> that is scary, though. Yeah, yeah. Hilarious. Any of the shows freak gross. you out ever? Like. Of course, you're doing them. You don't get know, to experience them you like know, we do. The, the scripts freak me out when I read them. I have to read them during the daytime. 
But other than that, I'm, you know. Second to last one of the season, the one with that scary guy was like an. We're watching this for Gillian Anderson, not Rosie O'Donnell. Saw it and you did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It was upside down on the wall, and it was just about to eat its head. Is that in the I movie? Came in and Is that in the movie? Him. Uh, no, it's, no not, it's not in the movie. I either. can't tell you anything about the movie. <laughs> Although, you know what? I bought, I was the ambient. I hope, um, I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for showing you because it's a clip from the movie, and um, and let's just show it before I get in trouble because it's really, Do really you need top to set it secret. Up? I don't, um, no, I think it speaks for itself. Okay, this is the movie that, that comes out Friday. Friday. Okay, take a look. Wake up. I like how in the first 10 minutes of the X-Files movie, fucking Ariel Quinn gets killed. Oh my god, what an awful gag. I don't know. Just keep watching, it's unbelievable. That's unreal. I've never seen anything like it. Remember Hanson? Rosie fucking thought that was sick. You know, they'll be like, Hanson's in the new X-Files, no. <laughs> now, um, are you coming back for another season and much more, I hope? Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And I'm shooting, shooting in L.A. Actually. Isn't that great? It is great. It's better for it's you, a, isn't it's it? It's a good thing. It's tough around. to be up there in Vancouver. It is. It is. It's a I'll say they moved down to L.A. and the show got bad. Time, but it's, it's time. Yeah. How's your baby? She's great. Yeah. She's really good. She's doing very well. She's, she's excited about it, too, I think. She's been listening to a lot of reggae lately. No kidding. No, she's she only has. like three, isn't I she? I know she's three and a half, and she loves um, Buffalo Soldier. I don't know why. She just does. Well, where'd she loves get the Bob reggae Marley. CDs? Well, from me. Oh, there you go. From See, because my son knows all the words to South Pacific. <laughs> I think it's what we push them towards. I think that's. Yeah, I think it I could think be. You're probably right. I cannot wait. June nineteenth, the movie opens. Uh, I'm a huge fan of it, and you, and you come back whenever you want. And I never. The movie was all right. The show is definitely way better, but. First movie's good, and then, like, it's crazy. Then there's, like, a werewolf Catholic priest one that comes out. Kind of funny. All right. How about... Iltam Sumra Rashupti Ilatim. Litait Belet Ishi Rabit Igigi. Iltam Sumra Rashupti Ilatim. Litait Belet Ishi Rabit Igigi. Ishta Sumra Rashupti Ilatim. Litait Belet Nishi Rabit Igigi. Yeah, it's a Bronze Age meme. You wouldn't get it, probably. On the afternoon of November 19th, 2012, a 911 call was placed to the police department of Spankingham County, Florida. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? Uh, I've, got, I've got a bit of a quagmire on my hands here. Can you tell me your name and current address? Yeah, it's, uh, my name is Stuart Pecan, and my address is... Okay, Stuart, what's going on today? Um, I just got home from school, and I, I went into the living room to watch some Family Guy, and, uh, there's, uh, my whole family, uh, uh, my whole family is dead. Okay, Stuart, just relax and stay on the line with me. He, Stuart Pecan killed his whole family, yeah. Um, okay, I gotta go now. Stuart? Fuck up. Oh, Don't hang up. Uh, Don't hang up. What the deuce? Stuart? The deuce? Authorities responded to the call and arrived on scene shortly after. Nothing could prepare them for the shockingly brutal crime scene they were about to step into. Responding officer George Clanton was the first to arrive at the scene. He was looking for 16-year-old Stuart Pecan, 
the one who had originally placed the 911 call. However, oddly enough, Stewart was nowhere to be found. After making himself some toast, Officer Clanton ventures into the living room. What he would see next would shock him to his core. Oh, shit. In the living room lay the slain corpses of 51-year-old Cindy Pecan, 47-year-old Louis Pecan, 19-year-old Julie Pecan, and 12-year-old Dewey Pecan. All four family members had been viciously stabbed to death, their bodies neatly laid side by side. Officer Clanton steps outside to declare the family house a crime scene. That's when suddenly he notices Stuart Pecan approaching. Excuse me, are you Stuart Pecan? I'm having a snack attack right now, I can't talk. In contrast from his tone on the 911 call, Stuart seems oddly calm and more focused on his snacks than the current situation. After experiencing a traumatic event, it's not uncommon for a subject to come off as eerily apathetic. Dissociation is a trademark characteristic of shock. This could explain Stewart's lack of attention given to the officer. Or it could be a sign of something more sinister that lies deep within. Trying to gather more context into what unfolded, Officer Clanton continuously finds himself being ignored. I ain't never heard of no super suspect. MAGA. I don't know who you're Pecan's talking about. Big bottomless bag of bizarre behaviors, paired with a growing list of unanswered questions, authorities waste no time in taking Pecan back to the station for questioning. The following never before seen footage has been analyzed by a qualified team, including a licensed professional counselor, a licensed attorney, a former criminal investigator, and a former mobile waste technician specialist with an associate's degree in quantum criminology. Okay, 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 here's another one. Why do women have boobs? So you get something to look at while you're talking to them. You have to ask me to turn that off, please. I'm Detective Stuckman. This is Detective Walker. We're here to ask you some questions pertaining to what happened at your home earlier today. Stewart, now the main suspect in his family's slaying, watches the detective closely, seemingly holding his breath. His body language and facial expression are clear indicators that he could be hiding something. What were you, what were you listening to when we came in? What was that? It's just a uh, family guy, funny moments on YouTube. It's my favorite show. In his free time, Stewart would host the YouTube channel Everything Quahog, where he would provide commentary on the many aspects of the animated Fox sitcom Family Guy. His videos would include episode discussion, merchandise reviews, and fan theories based on popular characters. With a breathtaking 8,000 subscribers and continuing growth and support from his viewers, it would have appeared that the sky was the limit for young Stewart. At this point, the detective is well aware of Stewart's peculiar obsession with Family Guy, but still, he indulges in a friendly manner to establish rapport and make the suspect feel comfortable. I, uh, yes, family, I have seen that I, that I think that's Peter Griffin, right? Yeah. I haven't seen that particular episode, but I, yeah, I, well, I recognize... He's running, he's running and he hits his knee on the mailbox and he goes, ah, 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 it's freaking so funny. Albeit a good impression, <laughs> Detective Stuckman and Walker are careful not to laugh at this bit, as they don't want it to be misconstrued as flirtation. Shortly after this, you'll notice Detective Stuckman begins a clever maneuver known as the whoopsie-daisy tactic. This is when the so-called good cop claims to have made an honest mistake, in this case, forgetting his water, giving him an excuse to leave the suspect alone with the so-called bad cop, heightening the pressure. Um, anyways, I wanted to get started, but uh, I knew I forgot something. Uh, I had a water. I get thirsty pretty easily, you know. You're probably gonna be here a bit. Could I grab you anything? Y yeah. Water? Okay. Uh. Detective Walker now sits with the suspect silently, creating a sense of unease, prompting the suspect to speak first. So am I gonna get to go home today? So am I gonna get to go home today? 
Detective Walker strategically employs what is known as the mimic gimmick, also referred to as the copycat technique. This is where the detective will copy, mimic, and mock the suspect to their best ability, breaking down the suspect's confidence and establishing authority. Am I? Am I? Are you copying me? Are you copying me? Stop! Stop! Stop. Detective Walker kept this up for an impressive 48 minutes before finally breaking the pattern. And what he does next will drastically escalate the interrogation. Got your nose. If you cooperate, you might get this back. What you just witnessed was a successful execution of a rare interrogation tactic known as the Oop I Got Your Nose method more formally known as the Orenthal James Simpson technique. I like how the, this is where the font in the text the is just family guy. It's like the family guy, like the family guy color. Bargaining chip for later in the interview. If the suspect wants his nose back, he knows he'll have to cooperate with investigators. Now awaiting the detective's return, the suspect engages in self-soothing actions, such as massaging the frenulum of his penis. In doing so, the suspect is hoping to gain some semblance of calm, no doubt in anticipation of the impending questions he's sure he'll be asked. Detective Stuckman re-enters the room to continue the interview. <sighs> you know, I saw Detective Walker in the break room. I think he, uh, I think he had your nose. He was showing it off the entire room anyway. People were having a good laugh at it. It's a beautiful nose. It's really, it's, it's a nice nose. Beautiful nose. Thank, thank you. If I were you, I'd want that nose back. I do. <laughs> and I think I could help you get that nose back. And think of it as like, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. It's at this point in the interview, Detective Stuckman finds himself jonesing for some chocolates. He faintly recalls having two Hershey's Kisses in his desk drawer. He leaves the room in search of the sugary sweets. This act, plus consuming the candies, was incredibly taxing for the detective, who in turn <laughs> decided to take a short nap in his office. <laughs> Refreshed and refilled, he returned to resume the interview two hours and 36 minutes later. All right, Stuart. You can, uh, you can call me Stewie. <laughs> okay, just a nickname. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it just fits me better than Stuart. Okay, that's interesting, because if I remember you... You... Tried to legally have your name changed to Stewie. Stewie Griffin. Actually, can you tell me a bit about that? Through a Freedom of Information Act request, we obtained court documents which revealed Stuart had recently attempted to have his name legally changed from Stuart Pecan to Stewie Griffin. This attempt was unsuccessful, however, <laughs> as his mother and father had both declined to sign off on the request. Stewie Griffin just felt like it uh, reflected like me as a person more. So I just, I wanted to, just I felt like that was me as Stewie Griffin, not, not. <laughs> um, go on. What you just witnessed was the near-perfect execution of a tactic only the most skilled and knowledgeable detectives can dare to attempt. Known as the na-na-na-na-boo-boo -boo technique, the detective flashes a sudden mocking gesture while the suspect is mid-sentence. This will serve to derail the suspect's train of thought, making it much harder to keep track of his fibs. I've like Due seen to them the do that before. The camera, it's difficult to determine the exact silly face made by Detective Stuckman. However, we hired a skilled spatial computer graphic system engineering specialist to create a three-dimensional render composite of what the suspect likely saw. So I started to, to do the name change, and it took like, I got like four months into it, but I had to, my, my parents at the last minute refused to um, sign off on it, so I, I... Stewart does his best to ignore the jesting detective's gesture gesture. However, it's apparent it's been <laughs> successful in tripping him up. <laughs> Pushing through the suspect's annoying ramblings, Detective Stuckman is setting the stage for what he's about to do next. 
I wasn't able to get my name changed. Your parents didn't allow you to change your name? No. Were you upset because of this? I know a lot of people have attachment to their identities and names being probably the biggest signifier of your identity. Yeah, I was pissed as crap about it. It made me, like, really freaking pissed. But not like, not like I do it. Did you catch that? This is like how yeah, Matt talks. Again. Take notice of Detective Stuckman in the bottom right. Compounding on the recent Nana Nana Boo Boo, the detective deploys its sister technique, the Neener Neener. It leaves the suspect speechless. So let's talk about today. So I left school at the last bell, and then I, I went straight home, and I got home, and I opened the front door, and uh, it was really quiet. And so I went to go put on some Family Guy in the living room, but then when I walked into the living room, there, that's where they, they, my mom and my dad and my brother and my sister. Hey, I, want, I want to back up. The detective is trying to establish a motive. And I don't know, into know a if story I know what you're talking about. about. You're saying you left school. Last bell, last bell rings at 3.20 p.m., right? Yeah. Well, we have administration saying you signed yourself out at 1.35 p.m. What? So you were not at school. So if you could help me understand. Or... No. That's wrong. I left at the last bell. They, if they said that, then they just got the numbers wrong. You're asking me to trust your word over the administration of your school. Why, yes. would, why, why would your name just show up? I, they freaking lied. I left it at 3.20 when the bell rang. I went straight home. So administrations... Oh, lying. maybe. Yes. Are the cameras lying too? Detective Stuckman initiates the first big confrontation by revealing that he is in the possession of evidence that contradicts Stewart's original story. What? Cameras? What if I were to tell you I had video proof of you leaving the <laughs> school at 1.35 p.m. I'm just, I, I'm trying to just help me understand because... They, they just like went to his school and filmed him like walking school. around. I was. They probably did you they, in the time frame. Of what? I think you know. Without directly saying it, Detective Stuckman is heavily implying that Stewart had something to do with the murders of his family. This marks a dramatic tonal shift in the interview. No! But I need you to tell me what happened. I did tell you, I told you exactly what freaking happened. Was I left school and I went home. I, the, the clocks. Do I have to go get the, do I have to go get the tape to show you? I'll give you one more chance. When did you leave school? 320 at the last bell. Detective Stuckman leaves to retrieve his laptop while Stewart waits anxiously. However, Detective Stuckman soon re-enters, seemingly unable to locate his laptop's location. Finally, five minutes short of two hours later, Detective Stuckman returns, laptop in hand. Now before I show you this video, your story is going to stay the exact same. Yes. You left school when? When the last bell? At 3.20, I told you that. If it says on video another time, then the clock setting's probably wrong on the video. The clock settings don't explain this. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down. Never going to run around and desert you. <laughs> These are the lyrics to Rick Astley's 1987 hit, Rick Rollin' Around, and as you just saw, Detective Stuckman has pulled off a successful Rick Roll. He proceeds to let the remaining 3 minutes and 27 seconds of the song play out.
I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused. Sorry, say that again. I'm conf confused. Jinx, you owe me a confession. Known in the criminal forensics field as a double whammy, Detective Stuckman hits the suspect with a perfectly timed jinx, just moments after executing an overwhelmingly successful rickroll. Typically, a jinx only results in one party owing the other party a soda pop. However, in a legal setting, the suspect now owes the detective a confession. Detective Stuckman's quick wit and clever forethought might have just expedited the confession he so viciously craves. Well, actually, I have my fingers crossed under the desk, so it doesn't count. Fucking shit. <laughs> this is probably what the detective is thinking at this very moment. In a devastating blow to Detective Stuckman, the suspect has outmaneuvered the jinx by having his fingers crossed, rendering the jinx null and most certainly void. However, Detective Stuckman has one more trick up his sleeve that the suspect will never see coming. I, I don't know what to tell you. I think you left school early. You went home. Obviously upset at the fact that you couldn't get your name legally changed. Your parents were keeping you from that. I think you went home and I think you did something that you regret. You're still sitting here trying to tell me the same story that you had nothing to do with what happened to your family, that you didn't kill your family. Yeah. I... <sighs> Is that what you're going to continue to say to me right now? <laughs> yes, I didn't kill my family. I, I already said it, and when I told you I'm not lying, I did not kill my family. I just want to make sure that I'm hearing you crystal clear. You did not kill I, your family. I did not kill my family. Okay. That's all I needed to hear. Detective Walker? Throughout the interview, there was something right under our noses that most of you probably missed. On several occasions, Detective Stuckman can be seen checking the time on his watch that was strapped to his wrist. And this wasn't without reason. Mere seconds before Stewart uttered the phrase, I did not kill my family, the wristwatch struck 12 a.m. November 20th. That's right. <laughs> opposite day. It was opposite day. The day when everything is opposite. With the confession he needed, Detective Stuckman calls Detective Walker back into the interrogation room to place Stuart Pecan into custody. God for Don't Detective get up. Don't Walker. Get up, son. Am I being arrested? Don't place your hands behind your back. <laughs> On reviewing the footage, one of our hawk-eyed analysts pointed out that when the suspect stands up, his shoelaces appear to be tied together. Further combing through the footage would reveal that when Detective Stuckman was searching for his laptop, he had laid a trap that would only be sprung at the very end of the interrogation. That's right. While searching under the table, the detective had covertly tied the suspect's shoelaces together, Adam. Adding the cherry on top of the proverbial Sunday of justice. Why did I, what did I, what did I do? I didn't do anything. I'm telling you, I didn't do anything. Stop. I hope they do more of these. This is actually awesome. Stewie Griffin was taken into custody by the Spankingham County Police Department where his bond was set at a shockingly high price of $80,085. <laughs> Stewart's trial would begin four months later, where he would ultimately be found guilty on one count of mamacide, one count of papacide, <laughs> one count of brotherside, and one count of stabbing his sister to death. Opposite. Despite his age, Stewart was tried as an adult, and a jury ultimately found him guilty on all charges, sentencing him to four consecutive life terms, with the possibility of parole after his second life sentence had been served. We a link to the video. To you want to check it out? To see if That's he would be willing mega. to share his side of the story and answer some of our questions about the case. At first, we didn't hear back. But when Stewart finally responded, he stated that he would only participate in the discussion if we met his list of demands, including $35 be placed into his commissary account, 
a portable DVD player, and the Family Guy Freakin' Party Pack DVD <laughs> box set collection, which is valued at $199.87. We did not agree to any of his terms, and are still waiting to hear back if Stuart will speak with us. Despite everything, Stuart has managed to sustain a decent following on his Everything Quahog YouTube channel, even posting the occasional Family Guy-related video from within the penal confines of the Hecox Correctional Institution. Stuart will be eligible for parole in the year 2160, when he is 174 <laughs> years old. Family Guy tats. Amazing. I fucking love that video. Probably going to wrap it up. In a few. I got nothing left, but first, a couple more things. Give me the money, you motherfucker! Give me back my son! son. Give me back my son! My son! son. Give me back my son! son. My son! son. Give me back my son! Give me the money! My son! son. Give me back my son! My son! son. Give me back my son! son. My son! Money! Give me back my son! Give me the money! I forget what fucking movie this is even. It was just called Ransom. Well, this is like uh, Swede Mason. Swede. I guess we would have seen that in a second. Here, I'll link it real quick. Give me the money, you mother Be back, my son. You know what's kind of funny I saw earlier before I wrap this up? This fucking clip from the new Simpsons episode. This is peak dystopia. Science lab. Ugh, but he hates science. He's like me. He's into Meat Canyon videos and doing wrestling moves on the dog and pouring Red Bull on pancakes. Science lab. Apparently Bart likes Meat Canyon videos now, according to... <laughs> according to the most recent episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> 